Um, it's quiet. I didn't make the strip club trip last night. I won't say who went. Um, but I, to be a very short trip at I uh, yeah, I I think I saw all of it in about ten minutes. Somebody offered me drugs, which I thought was so sweet. But then I wonder, how did you get them? This because you're so far from Colombia. So I was wondering how you got that. Um, well, my show got canceled. I was on a show called Legit uh, that was with an Australian comedian named Jim Jeffries um, that just got the axe last week. And then 20 minutes later, I got offered a show on Sci-Fi Network called Z Nation. It's about zombies. So when I head back to America, I go to Spokane, Washington to shoot that. Yeah, I'm, it's really, the scripts are really, really good. Um, well, this, it's three years after the zombie apocalypse. Um, and you know how it moves really fast. It's a, it's a little dark, but it's also kind of funny. Um, it's, it's not what Walking Dead is. I mean, Walking Dead moves really, really, really slowly. We don't do that. Um, they're shooting right now. Um, they promised me that it wasn't going to be crappy. You know what I mean? Because that was my first, my first thought was, I mean, Sci-Fi Channel, I mean, they ran the gamut. Some things are really, like, their production values are really high. And then they have Sharknado. And... Yeah, you know what? The thing about Sharknado is if you're in the market to do a Sharknado, that's great. Do the best Sharknado you possibly can. I'm not right now in the market for that. Maybe in two years from now. Um, or if something bad happens, like I lose a limb and I can't get any other employment, I would do Sharknado 6 or, or whatever. But right now, things are going well, so I don't want to do a Sharknado. I understand. Yeah. It's not exactly the career point you want to be in. No, I mean, good for you, Ian Ziering and Tara Reid. <laughs> I know, poor girl. I just feel sorry for it. I know. I actually used to know her. See, all those people, like, cause I came up, like, in 2000 with all, like, the teen movies and all that stuff. And so I was there the night that she didn't get into the bar. It's called Hyde. <laughs> and that is sort of Hollywood's way of saying, you yeah, you're kind of done. Uh, yes, I don't go out very much because I don't want to be told that. It was amazing, dude. I went into audition for a one-line part um, I, on location in Atlanta. So I was living in Nashville at the time, and I went down. It was like a four-hour drive and auditioned for one line and wound up getting a lead. And six months later, I was on The Tonight Show. That must be amazing. It was pretty great. But then I did like eight movies in three years. Um, and so like you, you realize that you're gone for three years, and suddenly you come back, and everyone else has like moved on with their lives. You know what I mean? Um, and then also sudden fame like that – because um, no one really looks like me. And so I remember I was doing my third movie. Uh, it was called Big Trouble. It was about a bomb on an airplane right before September 11th. Oh, no, uh, no. Yeah, but it was a huge cast of people. It's like Stanley Tucci and um, uh, Zoe Deschanel and Ben Foster. It was a great cast of people. Um, Barry Sonnenfeld, the guy who directed Men in Black, uh, he did it. Um, and I was walking down the street and we're shooting that. And this is like three movies, or third, my third movie. And uh, like about a year after a road trip. And this homeless man came up and said, is you the dude from Road Track? And I was like, oh, my God, I'm famous. <laughs> Homeless people know me. Um, but, it, it, you know, it takes a while to get used to, but now it's like I'm 14 years in. and sort of getting used to it. Yeah. I mean, I just – I mean, what I've come to realize is that my whole – my all I can do is what I do on the day. Like, you know what I mean? How you edit it, how it's perceived, it doesn't really have any bearing on – on how I feel about the project. I mean, it's basically your life is a collection of memories. And my job now is like a year, like those, these movies and TV shows are like yearbooks. I can look back and remember, like, that's what I used to look like. And these are the people I used to know. And that happened on this day. So that's, that's the best part, I think, about being an actor is that you're, you're living your life and you have a record, a photographic record of it. No, I'm not that guy. Um, but I respect it. I respect how whatever works for you. Uh, I respect that. But for me, I when I have to cry or ha portray an emotion, I don't need to feel it for it to look like that. Do you know what I mean? Because I know what that it looks like. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't really do that. But cause also, I didn't have any friends growing up. Like I grew up, I was pretty. I was a bullied kid and weird little bookish guy in a redneck town where everyone was like, oh, that's my phone. Um, I just got Wi-Fi, so I'm super stoked. Um, uh, so I used to just practice like like one man plays by myself and like, yeah, I would, like laugh hysterically and then cry hysterically and just I sort of I got good at that. Well, you know, 
no one believed that I was going to be an actor. Like at six years old, like everybody wanted to be firemen and all policemen and all that stuff. And I always wanted to be an actor. And people were like, get the hell out of here with that. Um, so it fuels me in the fact that no one could think that I, no one thought that I would do it. And I think it, that helps me now because you know our business is so competitive. Um, so I say to myself all the time, I want to do this more than you want me not to do it. So I'm going to win, right? Um, my my main goal for my career is to decide when I'm done. I get to s- decide. You know what I mean? I don't want the business to suddenly be like, well, we're done with you. I want to make that choice. And so I try to make choices in my career that will allow me to have that. Like, I'm not... I started out doing a lot of lead parts, and I realized when the movies wouldn't do well, I was blamed for it. So now, if, as a supporting actor, you don't get any of the blame, but you get all of the kudos when it does well. So so assessing risk is a big part of being an actor. People don't think about that. Oh, my God, only do it if you have to do it. Like, if I wasn't an actor, I, was, I got discovered in community theater for free. And I was doing it, and I was in law school at the time. And I, I would be probably a lawyer right now and still doing community theater because I just needed that outlet. Um, there's so many easier ways to make money. And I saw this documentary. It's like True Life, I'm an Actor, like in 2003. And the odds of making $100,000 a year, which is not very much money to live in Los Angeles because you tax and commissions and all that stuff because we make about 30 cents on the dollar. Um, the odds of making $100,000 a year 10 years in a row are $22 million to one. Wow. So everyone here has pretty much won the lottery. Um, so you have to keep remembering that, like how hard it is. And even when it's easy... You have to keep rem- – like, I, so I remember when I first moved to L.A., I, I called home. I was like, y'all need to move out here because they're giving away money because I was so ignorant. I was too dumb to know how hard it was. And then when things slowed down about six or seven years into my career and I was – you know, I was working but not as much as I was and not at such a high level, it freaked me out because that – but that's what being an actor is. It's that struggle. Um, you know, actors are – you know, people bitch about how much we're paid, or but you're not really paid for the job. You're paid for the, you know, the year that it took you to get the job. Do you know what I mean? Because um, th- that's really that's the hardest part of the job is getting the job. Excellent. Yeah. All right, well, I'll let you go check your messages. Okay. Thank you very much. Nice to meet you, man. You too. Enjoy the rest of your trip. Thanks.